Hello and welcome to New World Comics Podcast. I am Buck Berlin, owner-operator of this fine, fine establishment. With me, as always, is Stephanie Cerny. Hey, hey. And joined with us is the voice of God, Brad Reed, from Nerds to Men fame. Blessed be. Yeah, you all can check out Nerds to Men everywhere you can find the New World podcast on uh, Speaker, Stretcher, Streacher, str- uh, wh- where do we Spreaker. find what? All, Those are all wrong. <laughs> yeah. All wrong. <laughs> you know. Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker. S- streaker. iTunes. <laughs> YouTube. Follow, follow Streakers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, don't follow Streakers. <laughs> Bad idea. Follow the New World Comics podcast, but not Streak. All right. Stitcher. 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 Yeah. yeah. SoundClouds. No, not the SoundCloud. Oh, well, we don't like them anyway. <laughs> we yeah. can work on that one. They though. tried to kill my father. Yeah. Spreaker. They came after me. Stitcher. Spotify. Yeah. iTunes. YouTube. Facebook. Facebook. Uh, there's one other out there, I think. Google Play. MySpace. Yeah, MySpace. Yeah. Oh my God, we need to end on MySpace. I went back in <laughs> back in time and made us a MySpace account. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> strong opening, strong opening. Join, <laughs> <laughs> joined with us this week is uh, my good friend Than Medlam. Yay, hey. he's my friend too. Oh well, that's I, right. I, mean, well, I hope so. Mine's louder. Whatever. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so Than, uh, we always kick this off with a. Uh, who are you and what do you do? Uh, so I'm Fan Midlam and uh, I do lots of stuff, most of it music. Um, so I, uh, I teach voice and guitar at the Academy of Contemporary Music at the University of Central Oklahoma, also known as ACM at UCO. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I do a lot of guitar repair and uh, I build guitars and then I perform pretty uh, widely as well. That sounds super That's, fancy, right? It's not as glamorous as it sounds. Yeah. So the, <laughs> uh, I found out the the uh, uh, musician repairing uh, thing. Fancy, fancy name, luthier. luthier. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're a luthier, right? Yeah. Fancy. Uh, it's like Lex Luthier, but not <laughs> what? You know, maybe more like Luthier Vandross. But Brad Cage was, uh, you know, we were talking about you one day, and I was like, "Yeah, so he's a Luthier," uh, and he did the, well, you know, everyone eventually becomes a Luthier, and I was like, "No, it's <laughs> <laughs> they finally got to me." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a, no, that's a different thing. And then we had a, we had a good laugh. That's where yeah. everyone ends up. Yeah. Well, well, Lutheranism. He, he, well, talk, talk to Brad about it. It's a, <laughs> it's a whole thing. It's hilarious. But. um yeah. <laughs> no, uh, it, you know, because he just thought that I misspoke. Oh. Well. And I was like, no, it's the musician thing. He was, oh, that's right. <laughs> so well. <laughs> you have a fancy Instagram. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Medlam Guitar Works is me on Instagram. And uh, it's just uh, usually the stuff that I'm working on at the time. So lots of guitars, if you like guitars. So people need to go check that out. You should. Or yeah. else. Yeah, or else. Right. Or else what? I don't then know. But, you know. Something. You'll miss some cool guitars. Yeah. Yes. So, um, how's this? Do you want to talk about comics first, or do you want to talk about the music stuff first? I mean, I'm down to talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. I mean, it's a comic shop. Let's. So. How's this? Let's let's talk about the music stuff first, and then we can go on. on we can go on and on about comics, <laughs> but the music stuff. I okay. have some stuff that I've been wanting to ask you for a while. It's just, but you know, it, it'd be the. Uh, oh, that never came up in conversation, or I forgot to ask you because we got talking about something else. Yeah, probably comics. Uh, probably, <laughs> typically. <laughs> typically, or or as kids, because like uh, I mean, but before we delve into anything, Than is absolutely one of the most amazing parents I've ever met. Oh, uh, there, man. there, there are three parents that that come to mind. Like when I think like, oh, the best kids that have come in the yes. store. Your kids are are definitely on Thanks. that. that short can list. I can I get that like in writing? Yeah, definitely. And yeah, give no, it to I, my kids. I mean, there, there are things I mean that, are they going to like tear it up or eat it? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I mean, no, the, their there, kids. There, are, there are things that that you've said. It's the wow. That's that is uh, a parental move that I'm going to steal whenever the time comes for me to. All right. Yeah. It's the, yeah. oh my god. Yeah. That's genius. That is some great parental. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. like, can we just, like, put you together with the cages and make, like, super parents? Well, I'm so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dave Mears, uh, yeah. Like, he, uh, the the things that he's come up with is, oh, my God, let's let's, let's figure this out. But uh, anyway, uh, let's talk music real yeah. quick. Um, so you, uh, you know, you have your band, you, you right. teach, you do, you do all the prayers. So there's very little that you can't do, really. 
I mean, there, I would say there's a lot of stuff I can't uh, do. No, well, you'd be lying. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but uh, you, you, you know, let, let's start with the the voice thing. So, okay. when when someone signs up for your class, like, do you screen them, or does do they just kind of go in and you're like, all right, so. Yeah, mostly. Uh, I mean, the way the way our enrollment system works is mostly they just come in. Um, okay. So, you know, they go in and enroll, and I'm on the list of voice teachers, and either they pick me or they get stuck with me. One, one, <laughs> one of the two. <laughs> now, uh, do you uh, when, when they go in and, and try something? Do you yeah. find a style that would fit them? best or do you try to or or do they have like this is what i want to do and then you try to get them to that level so that's that's the interesting thing about about what we do at at, uh, at acm is that since we're working with you know contemporary music and pop music there's no uh there's no standard repertoire there's no uh there's not necessarily an accepted pedagogy right Mm -hmm. um so i kind of approach it like my goal is to help facilitate my students to do whatever they're trying to do in the most efficient, healthy, and skilled way possible. Okay. So like if I came to you and I was like, I want to sound like Freddie Mercury and you're, and you wouldn't do the, now you're more of a Louis Armstrong or would no, you like, no, I'd never do that. Interesting. Yeah, no, I'm going to, I mean, if that's what you want to try to do, we're going to start out working toward that. Now, if you're, you know, pretty far away from that, then you know I'm still going to be setting up things to try to move you in in that direction, right? Like try to yeah. try to try to up your skill set to something like that, um, <clears throat> because uh, I I don't want to. I'm not interested in changing the the character of the of the people that I'm working with, right? You know, and 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 it's art, right? Yeah, and you can't tell somebody else what their artistic vision is. Well, uh, yeah. what if they went in with with uh, uh, no, no idea what they wanted, and they're yeah. like, "Just teach me how to sing better." Would you do the, okay? Well, here's where I think you should go, or or would you just try to do? Here's the broad horizon. Uh, pick a point. Right. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm usually gonna start with, uh, with what are you into? Okay. Right. Like, if you were singing right now, what would you be singing? Okay. Let's start with that. So I, I'd be completely terrible because it'd be the. I'm into old blues and Britney and Spears. Britney Spears. Pop, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, it's, yeah, because, you know, my taste runs the gamut. So, it's, right. yeah. And then I try to do a little steering, especially if I can tell that, that maybe um, that maybe somebody's voice or skill level isn't really suited for what they're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, then I might try to maneuver them a little bit but it takes time to know somebody too i don't i'm not i'm oh, not gonna yeah, i'm not I, gonna go into that like you know the first or oh, second lesson right yeah, yeah. but it, I, I, that that's what i meant over time is, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't mean like no kid you're a sinatra or you're, or you're out of this business <laughs> right yeah no okay um let's see uh something that i always ask the uh, the teachers which you know I, I feel that this is the safe space are there unteachable people i don't think so okay i mean i well okay I think that if a person were to be unteachable, it's by their own choice. I don't think anybody is beyond learning or 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 gaining skills. I think you can choose to not. Okay. But I think you can choose to to as, <laughs> right. as well. No, no, I, I get it. No, well, because I, I mean, there, there's the uh, there's the naturally talented, and then there's the people that really have to work at it. Right. You know, like there there are people that can paint very well naturally, or as Martindale says, uh, painting's also a skill. Yeah. You know, like it's the, you know that, oh, mix those two colors together, you get this smudge right. here, there's your... Yeah, and I'm, yeah. I'm as a as a teacher, I'm I'm pretty anti-talent. I don't, I don't like to talk about talent. Right. Um, I feel like a lot of the time it's kind of, it's kind of a myth and it's a, it's a cop-out people use to, to, um... Uh, to make themselves feel okay with not getting where they wanted to get maybe like, right. It's like, Oh, well you're obviously better than me because you were born with a superpower. And it's like, it's not, that's not it. You know I mean? Everybody I know that's, that's better than me worked harder than me at some point. And I think if you can admit that, then, then you just know you have to work some more. Fair enough. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Last awful. Well, not last awful question, but, (laughs) Uh, the the other thing that uh, uh, I like to ask the the people who teach, 
what's the worst thing that people do consistently? You know, like like you you had mentioned once that you know uh, at one point all the girls that were coming to your your class were trying like starting off trying to do like the Zoe Deschanel like ah uh, yeah that. yeah the the weird pronunciation thing yeah the, the, yeah yeah and that's a thing I've, I mean for me as a music teacher the worst thing that that students do is not practice because that's just excruciating like it to to work with somebody for half an hour on something right and say yeah. okay you know go off you know next week come in. And uh, and we can, you know, progress on this and mm-hmm. move forward. And when you find yourself just going over the same stuff like week over week, that is brutal. Yeah, Fair enough. You're investing so much into them and they're not investing anything back. <laughs> right, right. And then you have to, you know, at some point you have to get kind of stern and, and dispel the illusion that you're going to get anywhere in music or anything else if you're not planning on applying yourself. I mean, that's. Fair enough. <laughs> huh. Okay, but I, I mean, it, it, you know, other than you know the the them not applying themselves, is, is there anything that they, you know, come in like that? You know, I know some girls like to just like touch their ear while they're <laughs> singing. Like, okay, that, so yeah, I've got that, I've got some pet peeves. Like that, that. That's what yeah. I mean. Like, like yeah. what's what what's just something that you're you're not ever going to count off or or, or discount someone from, but it's the really you're doing that right. <laughs> the sticking the finger in the ear thing kind of kind of bugs me. Yeah. Especially when uh, when you're in a quiet room and somebody's sticking their finger, you know, hey man, you can hear yourself. There's no other <laughs> noise going on. I, mean, right. I, I can kind of understand it if there's like a band happening, but you know, but we're we're all alone here. Sticking your finger in your ear is not going to help you yeah. tune better. So <clears throat> there's that, and th- and then for me, it's uh, it's it's singing with an obviously made up voice, <laughs> right? Like if you're you know a Midwestern American and and you show up and like you sound like a Midwestern American, and then you start singing and you and you're like doing an Amy Winehouse impression. Gotcha. I'm like that's not that's not your real voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know? Interesting. I mean, what about like the the people that put on the the full country twang? Like or or right. or, or, you do, know, or do you know do you see that as like them falling into a style? I don't see I I don't see that happen very much. Anybody that I have with a country twang sounds pretty darn country when they talk. Okay, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's I, it's yeah. mostly yeah. It's it's like you know trying to sound like Halsey or something. It's yeah, like, yeah. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you know the, this is the you know these are the things that I've been meaning to ask you for years. <laughs> And it's just the, okay, fascinating. That's good to know. Yeah. But we all go through it too. I mean, I, when I was nineteen, you know, seventeen to nineteen, I did everything in my power to sound as much like Eddie Vedder as humanly possible. <laughs> I mean, we all, we all go through it in some way or another. <laughs> See, Kira just told me that I was awful at singing and that I should just stop. So Aww. all right, we'll just we'll just back Aww. off on that. It's it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, get me really drunk. I'll, I'll sing for you. <laughs> Sweet. Very, very uh, seldom after. Yeah, uh, or before I should say. But um, interesting. Okay, so uh, musically, uh, what do you listen to? Like, you know, uh, I mean, I listen to all kinds of stuff. Um, here lately, I've been listening to a bunch of Greg Howe. He's kind of a kind of a shred guitar guy, mostly from the the eighties and nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, but <clears throat> I like a lot of soul jazz stuff. Um, I like a lot of rock and roll. I mean, that's such a hard question. How's this? <laughs> What is your least favorite type of music? I got I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like for me, uh, back when warehouse music was like the go to place, yeah, like, or you know, or CD warehouse, if you know, yeah. like the, you used to have two different types oh, of yeah. people, you know, warehouse music or CD warehouse, and you know, or you know, you knew a really good indie place, but uh, I would go and like. I could find anything great that I would love out of any section except for world music. Okay. And it was just that I never was able to pull anything out of there that I was like, <laughs> yeah, this is my new jam. Like, let's let's go do this. Okay, I guess I guess for me that might be like the uh maybe the singers and standards area. Okay. You know, like like uh like Rod Stewart sings the American songbook. Uh, right. Man. <laughs> I can't do it. Interesting. <laughs> I, can't, I can't dig on that. I I have this weird affinity of for for you know covers and things like that. that yeah. it, it's oh, it's stupid. <laughs> I have uh, I have a huge. Uh, as soon as I I found out that that it existed, uh, Elvis and Frank Sinatra. Anytime they you know felt like it, they just oh let's go record this song. Right. I, I heard someone you know so like 
I have Elvis singing Old MacDonald, like, because he was like, I feel like singing that today. Yeah, and see, I, I love Sinatra, and see, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm always hesitant to say I don't like a genre, because right. there's something good in, like, in almost every everything. genre, you right. know? And so I can't, I can't just write anything off, but. Yeah, I mean that's why you accept my love of Britney Spears and the. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, uh, which, which uh, for for those that uh, are watching, uh, Thana actually played my wedding. Uh, the uh, the whole thing stopped when he started uh, "Baby One More Time." <laughs> solo acoustic. Yeah, solo Baby acoustic. It was. Yeah, to this day, my favorite performance. <laughs> it was thanks phenomenal. Um, <laughs> All right, last last music question, and then uh, you know we'll, we'll move into the the comics and things like that. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I was looking at all these pop songs that I really really liked, and you know, and, and I, I usually start off with a "Oh, that's terrible," but I love it. Yeah, <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, it turns out most of them are written by Max Martin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who, when he started doing all the the. Stuff. Like he he started writing a lot of the the big '90s hits. Like he did, right? Baby, one more time. Uh, I want it that way. And you know, most of NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. So anyone who's like, you know, one's better than the other, right? Same damn songs. And didn't he kind of kick off the like pop chicks that rock yes. movement? Yeah, yeah, he did all that. Yeah, but uh, like he wrote, I want it that way, and he didn't understand what the hell it meant. <laughs> and like, hit me, baby, one more time. It was him trying to do. Call me baby one more time. Really? Yeah. Ah, and he didn't get into that. But no. what do you what do you think about the the people who set out just to make the pop hits? Like, do you think that there's validity in that, or do you think that it's like people are just throwing spaghetti at the wall, seeing what sticks? I mean, I think they make a lot more money than I do. <laughs> well, but, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, there there is a system to it, and there's an art and a and a and a craft both to it i mean you right. know, the good ones they end up writing a whole lot of freaking songs because yeah. they're good at it you know yeah like i mean this and, guy is still doing like taylor swift Katy perry and all yeah that. yeah so uh it, it was the do you do you see him as like you know oh he's the uh the the walmart of like he's just right. putting out a thing or like do you see an artistry in that so, yeah i mean i i think i think there's a kind of artistry in it right i mean you have to yeah. i think i think you get you gotta you gotta draw a line between like what you might call art music and what you might call oh pop music definitely. right like he's not trying to he's no. not trying to make any great artistic statement well, and, and, but it's still yeah. i mean you still got to be a musician to to do what he's doing mm-hmm. right and not to say that you know pop music can't be art right you know like hell look at half of what the beatles did you know right like, i mean pop art is literally a thing right so yeah so but yeah, okay, interesting. Because I, I mean, like, I found out that you know, uh, when when uh, Justin Bieber came on the scene, there was an actual uh, mathematical formula called baby per minute in, <laughs> in writing a song like that. Yeah, and it was the oh my god, and right. and, and you know, whenever that became public, like it uh, didn't get used as often or something like that. Right, it was the this is fascinating. Right, or like when when Aerosmith had what like crazy and amazing and crying and they all sound exactly the same and right. they all happen to be written by the same dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah Who it, isn't in Aerosmith. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it was the oh, there's that thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, right. yeah, there, there's there's the the definite, you know, formula to it. And, and yeah. yeah. So, yeah, anytime someone's like, "Oh, you know, I I don't listen to pop music." Aerosmith is what it, and it's the no, look at look at all your your favorite people. Look at who's writing your songs. Oh, yeah. And you'll you'll be floored that you know, yeah, Taylor Swift uh, Taylor Swift writes most of her her music, but her hits are not her. No, no, not at all. No, and it always. It, I was talking to somebody else about this yesterday about the this this weird like paradox of of quote unquote cover tunes, right? It's like you know, let, let's say Pink, right? Like Pink sings a song that somebody else obviously wrote, mm-hmm. and you know, I mean, really, all she did was like show up and sing it, right? Good for her; she's a great singer, yeah. right? But then, like, if somebody you know sings the same song at the bar down the street they have no t- no artistic integrity because they're doing a cover tune and it's like wait but but yeah. what did but what did she do in the first place well and, and you know that that's that's you know what what uh you know i have no qualms with it oh I, I like cover songs all this and you know uh tom and i up here had talked about it like our, our disdain for the breathy cover tunes oh yeah they're just terrible <laughs> yeah but like um like postmodern jukebox Half their stuff is like, oh, that's a really intriguing thing, and then yeah. half it's the, 
that's incredibly trite like why you know yeah yeah and and i and and without like dogging anything anybody does a lot of that kind of seems to me yeah like trite and and kind of a a musical costume right it's like teehee this is what you know and then but but i'm not like being moved in any way i mean uh there was a uh uh, ariana grande song that uh they did that that i had heard that first and then i heard like hers yeah and it was like ooh, i think i like theirs better like that sure almost gave some more meaning to the 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 song whatever they were trying to get out right. of a pop song right but it was the oh that you know yeah. i really dig what they did there yeah it's like pop, pop punk covers is like almost its own right mm-hmm. oh, genre yeah. now yeah. right <laughs> and do you remember like when those cds came out oh yeah like yeah. those were like a special type of thing right when those pop punk covers came out right and now it's now there's bands that it, it seems like yeah that's, that's all, all they do that's their thing yeah right well i, I think it's because most of the pop punk people are like Okay, so we've survived the pop punk holocaust or uh, <laughs> apocalypse. Whoops. All right, we should uh, pull that one out. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the apocalypse, and uh, yeah, this this is what we have left. Yeah, yeah. But there, and and there there are jazz guys that do it too. I mean, there there are plenty of jazz dudes out there that are, you know like come up with like with like self consciously overcomplicated versions of yeah of pop tunes yeah <laughs> yeah which actually that brings up a, a good point your uh your performances like you are absolutely one of the best live musicians i've seen oh thanks man and uh i, I mean you know like i i don't get out of the ho- the house often you, you know this <laughs> but uh you know anytime that i can i'll go see your band you right know on. yeah so anytime you all see equilibrium uh pop up hop on out go see it please do january 12th january 12th at the uco jazz lab yeah and uh anytime that there's alcohol involved uh, without fail, there there's uh, a drunk guy will go up on stage, uh, or right in front of the stage, start dancing and emulating whatever you're playing. Right. The best is whenever you bring out the the conch shell. Yeah. Because <laughs> you you play a damn conch shell like it, it's not the oh here's like a flute that's it jammed in. It looks right. like no you're playing an actual shell. And I never thought about what that looked like. Until I started doing it a lot in public, yeah. right? Like, I mean, I was just trying to play a shell, right? But it <laughs> it looks a little weird. And <laughs> I mean, for, I, for I those watching, it. you know, it, it's because <laughs> it, it's a whole lot of like this, and then like right, because you you got to hold the shell, yeah, and then, and then the pitch is controlled with how, like how far your hand is in the shell, so you're yeah. just like hanging out doing and it's yeah yeah it gets misinterpreted a lot and and, and the, i get the, made uncomfortable a lot because well, well, because people talk the, about it well because whoever's emulate like without fail their mouth is just open like oh <laughs> and they're like right. guy listen you're the dude bro that would be so uncomfortable yeah. but in the moment yeah. like yeah right yeah but uh i've seen you uh play five six times seven you know yeah uh, maybe once I didn't see that. <laughs> it was just the oh god. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, yeah. Anytime you all uh, get a chance to go out and see and play, uh, it's phenomenal. Uh, yeah. So thanks. I promise we don't suck. Yes, I promise it too. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's let's uh, break into comic book stuff because yeah. you know, that's more or less why people, you know, watch this thing. That, are, that makes sense. It's I'm in a comic shop. So, so good looking. Well, that's why I want. Yeah, that. that got, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that just got cut out. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, all the people that don't watch the video are like, "Thank God I'm just listening." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what actually just happened. So, um, <laughs> uh, Sam, what yeah. uh, what got you into comics? My mom. Yeah, my mom got me into comics. She was a she read. Lots of Legion of Superheroes when she was a kid. How yeah. cool! And uh, and so she, I mean, I I almost learned to read from comics. I I was you know I, she was getting me comics when I was like four and five years old. So that is awesome. I've been reading comics a long time. That is super awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll I'll say it like if you're a Legion of Superheroes fan, uh, everything that could go wrong in reading a comic series has yeah to, like. It's been rebooted. They've renamed characters. They've killed off characters. And oh no, look, they're back. Here, we're going to change things midline. Look, we destroyed the Earth. Oh, nope, here's another Earth. Here's yeah. the and yeah, this is before comics, you know, comic series got perpetually rebooted. Like, they didn't have their own title for years. Yeah. You know, because, like, it was, 
always a backup in a Superman book mm-hmm. if you were lucky, right? You know, and and uh, just following the the stories, they're amazing. Like they are, they are, and and they 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 dealt with some kind of deep stuff. You know, like oh yeah, like triplicate girl, right? She can split oh. into three, and then one of them dies. Yeah, so then she's duo damsel from then on. But like, can you imagine like a third of yourself dying? Right, that's freaking heavy, man. Yeah, <laughs> or well, and and then dealt. Less heavily uh, was when a uh, uh, lightning lad lost his arm by trying to shock <clears throat> Space Moby Dick. <laughs> but still, right. that was lost. But yeah, yeah no, uh, yeah, like wildfire like giving himself up to save the team. Right, you know? yeah, yeah. And, and this is you know all this happened like in the sixties. Yeah, right? this isn't. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite. Uh, uh, the last time I was up at my parents' house, uh, my mom hooked me up with all of the like digest collections that oh. she used to pick me up at the grocery store. Yeah. And there's some great stories in there. But one that I remembered really well was uh, was the ghost of Pharaoh Lad. Oh. When, have you, yeah. You know that story? Oh, of course. And it's deep, right? And then, yeah. like, you know, you, you you think it's a ghost, and then, oh, no, no way it's a ghost, right? And then, I mean, I guess, spoiler alert. Yeah. But, at the, but at the end, like, the, the L on his ring has been turned. Everybody's like, oh, man. Yeah. What if it was Pharaoh? Well, and then uh, when you find out uh, who uh, Lightning Lad and uh, uh, Saturn Girl's kid is, like it's the yeah. Oh, that is so messed up. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah. So yeah, Legion. Uh, you know, I I honestly didn't read Legion until I got a job here. Right on. Because uh, you know, I, I knew everything Marvel, DC, like you know any of that stuff. Andy was kind of iffy because you know. I, I didn't really know too much when I first started here. Yeah, but Legion was always that that section of comics that didn't really ever matter because DC at the time didn't ever use them. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So why uh, why would I care? Right. And then uh, Mark Wade started writing the run, and I jumped in uh, kind of late, but I, I played catch up. Like yeah. I, I got into I think issue eleven or twelve had just come out. Read that and like that night, like I, I had just recently been given the key to the store, right? So like I was like, oh, I'm big time, yeah. <laughs> so and and you know, uh, as as I have it to this day, if you work here, then you know anything that's not shrink wrapped, you can read for free. You know, like sure. please, no more, right? You know, yeah. So um, I read up to that point, and I was like. Oh my god! I need more Legion. Like <laughs> yeah. this is this is my new favorite thing. So I got up here and I went to the back issues, and knowing that Legion jumps around and got canceled and did all the you know canceled, restarted, changed teams, did all this stuff, I had no idea where to start. Ah. So I went over to the Legion hardcovers, found the earliest one, which was volume uh, volume two, and. I broke the shrink wrap and was like, I'm buying this. Let's get some more Legion. <laughs> the first Silver Age uh, Legion story that I read was the introduction of the Legion of Substitute Heroes. Yes! Oh, my God. <laughs> that, that story is so amazing. That is that is probably my second favorite comic of all time. And I, I love how how like kind of prickish the actual Legion is oh, yeah. in that story. <laughs> yeah, because you know, every story up until then, they're the most accepting, loving group you'll right. ever... Like, it's the... Man, dial back there, you hippies. Yeah, yeah. Like, unless your power's lame, and, apparently. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then like, it's no. the, no, yeah. Stone Boy, Fire Boy, we don't have any use for anyone who spits fire. Right, the dude that could uh, could could tune into any frequency with his ears. Yeah. Right, you guys couldn't come up with a use for that? They're like, no, that's that's stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they kick out all these people, and then, like, you know, lo and behold, oh, look, all of them are super useful. Right. When they work with a team. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so um, I read all of those, and and they're eight page stories, ten yeah. page stories uh, at most. And reading it, you know, like just surface level, so much of it is, uh, you know, why well, I'm going to go over there and pick up a chair and then hit a guy with it and right. do all this. <laughs> but when you read all of it and and look, it's the oh, they only had eight pages to tell like two trades worth of stories. Yeah, like here's sixteen issues worth of comic. In eight pages. Yeah. Here you go. And that's how Legion was done. So, yeah. Like, yeah. So, anytime someone says, yeah, I got started on comics with Legion, it's the, yes, you did. <laughs> you are yeah. 
you're more of a comic fan than I am. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> so, yeah, no matter what, you're going to love comics always. Yeah, yeah. So. You can't not. Interesting. What what else did you read way back then? Uh, uh, lots of Spider Man and the Hulk, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and then I I mean I got a ton of those digests right, and they were uh, it was uh, it was like just DC Comics Digest I think is what they were called. Yeah. And, and you had I mean you had usually like five or six stories in every one of them, mm-hmm. and there was you know there was Neil Adams Batman stuff, Neil Adams Spectre stuff, yeah, classic Superman. Superboy, a Legion of Superheroes, and then and then you'd get like like weird random stuff too, you know, like Mike Grell Amethyst and Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Or like you get like like three really innocuous stories from the sixties and then all of a sudden like people are getting torn apart <laughs> in Amethyst and Gym World. You're like, What am I reading? Yeah, well and, and it's it's really cool about like those versus like you know, when I was uh starting out in comics, we got the uh Overflow three packs like multi pack oh, comics that yeah. were like, hey, these didn't sell, kid. Here you go. Right, they're cheap. Right, <laughs> but, of, but Whit- Whitman and stuff. Yeah, Gold Key. But yeah. uh, honestly, they're they're not too dissimilar because it was you know like like when DC was putting that together, half of it would be definite quality, and then others were the well, we have that laying around. Maybe it'll help sales. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you know it, it it's kind of the same thing, and and you know kids. You know, kids these days don't really necessarily get that. It, it's the, you know, if anything, right. they get a story that's tailored to them that's poorly done, or they get, like, some of the best stuff out there. Yeah, yeah. So, it's it's just kind of weird. It is. Yeah. yeah. It's a completely different world. I mean, where I grew up, you know, Hutchinson, Kansas, there was no comic shop or anything like right. that. I mean, mm-hmm. if you wanted to read comics, you it was whatever you could find at the gas station and the and the grocery yeah. store yep. or uh, or subscriptions. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that was that was it. Yeah. Um so what do you what do you read now? Uh what do I read now? I mean, I I'm I'm way into the Hellboy stuff. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. Um and uh then I kind of I fell off uh I was reading the uh the Scott Snyder and Capullo Batman stuff, but mm-hmm. I kind of fell off after Rebirth, so I feel like I need to catch back up. You because, really do, because I I really dig Tom King and Michael Jannon. Uh, the uh, the Grayson series, yeah, was one of my favorite books of the last several years. Which so. it really shouldn't have. Like, I mean, yeah, I remember because like, you and I were, were it's reading a good series. Well, right, but but you know, like the the premise that kicked it off was that. Nightwing was on camera in front of the entire world, and right. like they hammered home the point that no, 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 anyone that could possibly have a screen in front of them is watching this thing right now. This is the moment. <laughs> Everyone on Earth who's never even seen a Nightwing now is seeing Nightwing. Oh, look, they took off his mask. And guys, it's Dick Grayson. It's <laughs> Dick Grayson. He lives in Bloodhaven. Here's his address. <laughs> Dick Grayson. Here's his guy. No more Nightwing. And then they're like, Let's make him a spy. Right. <laughs> right. That would be difficult. Yeah. yeah. And it was the, man, this is the worst setup ever. It's a pretty heavy suspension of disbelief. Yeah. Yeah. And Tom King was like, well, here you go. And it's the, <laughs> this is so much better than it has any right to be. And, and you know, now we know, like, oh, Tom King is just that good of a writer. Yeah. He really is. Yeah. yeah. But, oh, my God. Like, I was just so mad through most of it with the... Everyone would be like, "Hey, it's that guy from that time that everyone saw him on screen." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just got the the DC app, mm-hmm. yes, so that I could watch Titans. Yes, it's freaking amazing. But uh, interesting. So, so I've been catching up on a bunch of uh, a bunch of old DC stuff too, like you know, reading some Teen Titans here and there, and, nice, and digging through a whole lot of old Batman. Yeah, uh, if you haven't re- uh, uh, read the uh, Jeff Johns Teen Titans, mm-hmm. that is almost as integral uh reading for the you know for the team as the wolfman press stuff okay for the first almost 30 issues maybe a little bit past that but yeah, yeah like it's it's that good see i'm always i'm I, it jeff johns is a 50 50 shot for me he's a he's a coin toss sometimes he's good and sometimes i re- i feel like <laughs> i feel like i'm reading like somebody playing with action figures <laughs> <laughs> see uh, sometimes that's not the worst thing ever <laughs> Um, now, uh, I'd say Jeff Johns before the one year later jump. Yeah. All that's good. Okay. Like his JSA stuff, solid. Right on. Um, like the, the JSA Hawkman, uh, crossover, um, is absolutely one of my favorite 
uh, multi-part stories in in all of comics because yeah. he's he set up stuff, you know, kind of when he first started in on on uh, JSA, just setting up the okay, well, we can have this classic character come back or yeah. you know this legacy character step in and fill out all these roles and check out what I did with this. Ah, uh, look, everything's going to hell. <laughs> you know, because like, yeah. you know, like Black Adam joined the team and then turns out. Uh, turned on everyone to Go take figure. well, well, but it, I mean, at the time he was like, <laughs> "Man, look at this character! Like he's he's making strides and he, he's really trying to to be a hero." Yeah, and then he turns on everyone to take over his home country. Nice, yeah, and it was the wow, wow, and it, it was just so well done. And then, yeah, uh, yeah, and then after the the one year later jump, you know, post uh, Infinite Crisis, a lot of that went downhill. Yeah, so. So, so yeah, I yeah I agree. What do you think about Titans? I think it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's 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 just crazy well done. I mean, some, sometimes I think it gets a little, uh, a little purposelessly violent. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but the the character work on it, I I think is great. And I I'm I'm a Hawk and Dove fan. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been since the Carl Kiesel Liefeld miniseries. Um, but it's really hard to find good stories with hawk and dove right <laughs> yes <And> it is <laughs> it's like i love the characters but i wish somebody would do something like worth the crap with them yeah. yeah and i really feel like they have with titans like yeah i mean they, they change the backstory a lot but nothing that none of the parts that matter and the essence of the characters is still like really there and really not just well written but well acted and, i've been like really impressed yeah like way more than uh than i thought i was going to be yeah interesting because like I, you know, I, I haven't done the uh, the DC app yet, just because I'm waiting for that Young Justice, just waiting oh, for Young yeah. Justice, because you know, yeah. Uh, but I've heard nothing but bad things about the the Titan show. Really? Oh. Yeah. So Man. I'm really, I, I've been real happy with it. Yeah. Interesting. I'll okay. Love it. Well yeah. then, I, I mean, I trust both of your opinions, so <laughs> I will. Uh, I'll I'll give it the time of day. You should check so, it out. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I mean, whenever I find time, but yeah, yeah, right. Like I, I like I will make time for for Young Justice because, like, yeah, yeah. I I hate to say it, but it might be better than the Justice League Unlimited stuff. Like Justice League Unlimited uh, is, is there's just like such a place in my heart for Justice <laughs> there, League there, Unlimited. Like me too. Like uh, back when, like you know, working here and playing indoor soccer were like my life. Yeah, uh, there were times I would like miss the indoor soccer just so i could watch the latest <laughs> justice league unlimited. yeah like it, it meant that much to me like i canceled dates i like Dang. yeah i mean justice league unlimited was just such well, and, so amazing well, and, and every week like that you you know it wasn't like the you know internet is now where like you know what's coming oh out, yeah or, you or, didn't or, know like yeah you it, had to catch it right? yeah and and, the guest voices on that were oh great yeah too yeah and uh you know you, you'd sit there and, and watch through the the end credits to see what was coming the next week mm-hmm. you were like Oh my God! Wildcat's gonna be in there. Yeah. Oh my God! Roulette's gonna do the. Are they gonna do the? You know, battle royale. Like, oh yeah. my God! This is happening. Oh my God! I think I just saw a star and stripe. <laughs> <laughs> is that Sandman? Right. Yeah. 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 And so, okay. So, being an obscure character guy, you'll, oh, yeah. you'll, you'll appreciate some of Titans because, like, really? one of the main villains they have. Yes. Come, it, the nuclear family. Really. And they are terrifying. <gasps> And well, I mean, they you, should be, but but yeah, <laughs> but I never imagined that like such a cheesy D list character could come out and just like scare the crap oh out of me. Oh my god, and, and they do. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, talk to me, and and you know, I I love my my Batman, Superman, and and all that, but like talk to me about like Z list characters, and I will give you just the list of you know. Oh, yeah. Here's who I love. Here's like the the. You know, anymore, half the reason we do superhero school is the, all right, <laughs> like, so I can throw D-Man in something. I've had so yeah. many conversations where I really feel like like somebody watches what we do at superhero school, <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like taking all of these ideas yeah. and all of these characters that we have, and they're just like, let's make shows right. of all of these crazy characters they do at superhero school. Because so, all of a sudden they start showing up, <laughs> right? So were you guys were you guys fans of, of uh, Batman: Brave and the Bold? Oh yes, yeah. yeah because that's all another, of those characters yeah. right, started yeah. showing up, right? <laughs> yeah, and I feel like such a goofball because I'll be sitting there watching it with my you know with my wife and my kids, uh-huh. and I'm like, oh, Buana Beast is coming, you know? Yeah. And they're, and they're Which, like, who? What are you talking? Yeah. About? yeah. 
He oh, was man. at superhero school. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, selling Kira on, on Brave and the Bold, because, like, she's Batman in the animated series to her core. Yeah. Like, that is, that's, her, you know. Right. And, and I was like, all right, so there are times that Batman Brave and the Bold is better than that show. And she's like, you shut your mouth right now. I'll <laughs> set you on fire. I was like, well, here's the Jewel Thief uh, episode that right. Batman yeah. the animated series is terrible. <laughs> Look, you know, the kids saved Batman from the Penguin. Yeah. Like, Here you go. Or here's, you know, like the the uh, Batman Spectre episode. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Like, it's just yeah. such a different flavor of right. Batman. Yeah. Like, yeah. you have to appreciate, like, the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and you know, because he can, like, you still get the feel from, from you know, Diedrich Bader's performance that he could snap at any moment and, like, yeah. just completely wail on someone, you know. There, there was one episode where it's the oh, we get fascist Batman, where he had like, right. <laughs> is him versus the uh, the violinist or something. Yeah, the, the, yeah, it was terrible. I, uh, yeah. I, I just got done reading uh, the Caped Crusade. Um, it's, it's basically just a, a, a overlook of the history of Batman and you know, cultural impact and yeah. the people that worked on. The, on the different things, and and, uh, and they were talking about the the Adam West show, mm-hmm. and they said one of the big one of the big driving forces of the the production on that was that was that if they if they ever think we're joking, then the whole deal is sunk. Like it's got to be, you know, no matter how ridiculous we're being, it's got to be serious. Yeah, all the time, you know. And Adam West nailed that. And then I I really thought Diedrich Bader like kind of. I mean, Brave and the Bull kind of brought that idea back. Mm-hmm. You know, it was never it was never self consciously campy. It was just fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. I, I mean, speaking of of that, like you were you were involved in the early days of superhero school. Up yeah, there, and, and so you you brought some of that. Yeah, you you uh, were the star of the lowest attended superhero <laughs> school to date. <laughs> Yeah, was that the, was that the Dark Avengers? Uh, no, or no, the, no, no, the, the, or the or no, the question, the question, because you know, the, the Dark Avengers <laughs> yeah. one, we started off with like three kids, but by the end of it, oh, that's it, right, like it, we packed out to like forty kids. Yeah. It was the where did everyone here show up? Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, but uh, yeah, the question, like it, it was the the first one of the year, and it had just lightly iced or snowed or, or something, and we're like, we'll see what happens, <laughs> right? And it was Aiden and like. <laughs> One other kid, like one kid yeah. was legitimately there, and then it was the oh, and both of them were like, "Who the crap are you supposed to be?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you're, like we love the question, yeah. you know, like, your like own, the question yeah, is like the he's ba, yeah. yeah, yeah. Your own son was like, "Who? <laughs> huh?" I need to get you to make me another one of those masks oh, because yeah. uh, every time now we can do it and have it not be like super scary. <laughs> right. Well, it, yeah. but, but like every time Halloween rolls around and like I have to go to something like quickly and i don't have a costume i always think man if i just had yeah the question mask, it's just so super set. simple to make too right yeah you know uh but yeah i could totally make one of those for you yeah no <laughs> problem um so like another thing too is i think that your batman really was one of the pivotal points that changed superhero school definitely oh. yeah well because before you had come along and showed me all this uh Everything that we did was cardboard and duct tape and, and hot glue. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. and, and then, you did this all on your own. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then you're like, "Hey, have you have you ever looked at this like craft foam stuff?" <laughs> and we were just <laughs> like, "What?" Here's, here's floor mats and here's this. And then you showed me this picture of all right. So that thing that looks like leather, uh, you know, like worked leather. Yeah, I was like, "Yeah." So whatever. You're like, it's foam. <laughs> all that's this. Here's how you do it. Here's how you heat it. Here's how you do this. You know, you heat this up and it'll hold shape. I was like. All right, I'm sold. Right, I'm and, well, and now you're like making stuff that that would be in the tutorials that we looked at. Then. Right, like you're well, like you're uh, pushing things far with that stuff. I think. Oh I mean, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, so thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, like you you changed superhero school. Yeah, entirely. Well, <laughs> I mean, like, that's like you did. Yeah, I, I mean, there are characters that we could not have done had you not shown me all that stuff. Well, I'm glad it, I'm glad I did. Yeah, but yeah. I, uh, I mean, to to bring it back to to the importance of it, like. You know, to me, you are the the Batman that I think of when when we're doing our our stuff up here. Oh, thanks. Know, uh, That's one of the most fun things I think I've ever done. And I've do, I've 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 done the Batman thing at like parties, and I, I don't I don't enjoy it well, particularly. I, yeah. But I really I really love to do in superhero school, and and then like when you guys have the sales and stuff. Like well, and, and I think the difference is like at, at parties, like everyone has that expectation of oh, Batman's here to have fun. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> like here, right. like Batman you're on. Be, yeah. yeah. Like you have to be on yeah. or something. But I, I mean, like you have such an integrity t- to yourself as is, and and that just you know while you're dressed as Batman, it kind of brings that out more. Right on. Okay. And and you know you're you're talking to the kids about the importance of trying hard and and you know uh, well being and character and and all these things and see wow. It's not like he's, you know, hammering these things home. He's just talking like you're Batman. Yeah, yeah. like, you're like Batman. you turn into and, the and character. these kids are like, <laughs> okay, so if I work really hard, yeah, well, and that's what I love about Batman. That's yeah. that's why he's always inspired me. You know, he's he's just a guy that made up his mind. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it has a lot of money, but yeah. <laughs> and it's like you know, like we talk in superhero school about like, like you can make good choices, or yeah. you know, like you have this chance and it's like that's what batman's telling people yeah. you know yeah yeah those uh those... like are you gonna make sad choices right like are you gonna be like the the villain that's making sad choices or are you gonna make good choices yeah you know well that... and you know what one of the things that you know batman had had always hammered home with you know like anytime that there was a uh a bull beast or someone else who who'd shown up batman was always willing to give him that chance and it's that if you're nice enough to someone which is weird to say that you know Batman's nice enough to yeah. someone <laughs> that they'll come around and, and be the good guy. They will, you know? yeah. yeah, yeah. So the, uh, back to those DC digests. Um, I had one, uh, and actually, I just reread it a couple of weeks ago. The one with uh, the Wrath. Yeah, which it's, it's like the negative Batman, right? Like the story mm-hmm. starts out talking about you know basically everything that happened to Batman happened to this guy but he didn't have the same opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he becomes like the evil version of Batman and the whole juxtaposition of that. And I mean, I was really young when I read that story and it like really, I think it really affected me. Yeah. Yeah. It's a heavy story. Well, yeah. uh, Tell you what, we'll, we'll actually uh, end it on this just because I I think that this is kind of the the perfect capstone of that. A couple years back on, uh, I think Facebook, we, we, uh, you know, got challenged as like, what are your four like comics that that meant the most to you or whatever? Like, what are your four yeah you know comics? And uh, there was a Spider Man one that you were talking uh, about that was like, you know, here's Jay Jonah Jameson and you know talk about integrity and that. And, yeah. So uh, I mean, you know, not to put you on the spot, do you, but you know, do you want to talk about any of those? Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's that's one of them for sure. And it was a it was an issue of Amazing Spider Man is one of the John Romita Junior issues uh, from the eighties. And it was called, um, it was like, what a day for a daydream. Mm-hmm. And they they went through and uh, and they just showed, it was like four or five little, you know, like just three or four page stories talking about some, you know, the, the main character's daydreams. And yeah, there was the one where, where J. Jonah Jameson shows up to work and, and like everybody loves him and everybody's giving him the thing that he asked for <laughs> mm-hmm. that day. And then Spider-Man shows up and he knocks him out. <laughs> <laughs> right, but the the Spider Man one is the one that always got me, and I always think about it when, uh, when you know, especially as an artist, you deal with the the idea of uh, of imposter syndrome and and things like that a lot, right? Yeah. And and uh, uh, Spider Man's daydream uh, is all about his insecurities, and he goes and he helps the Avengers, and uh, and they're like, hey man, great job, you know, you should be an Avenger. How about you join us? And he's like, what? I could be an Avenger. And then, for some reason, in the dream, Captain America's shield reflects the truth. It has some kind of magic power. And so they all look at Captain America's shield, and they see him, they see Spider-Man reflected in the shield, and they see Peter Parker. And they're like, wait, he's just some kid. You're just some kid. You can't, you can't be an Avenger. What is this, you know? And, and you know, you're reading it going, yeah, but, but he's freaking Spider-Man, right. yeah. you know? Yeah. But, like, that's... That's the insecurity that Peter Parker carries around, and mm-hmm. that's that's pretty heavy, man. And see, I, and I love that it, it's one of those issues, and not like the oh, you know, here's here's you know what is you know critically uh, acclaimed you know as as one of the greatest issues ever, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. But uh, you know, so it's it's really neat that you know you read that and take that away from it. Like, like what a relatable, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. like what a relatable thing, like for everybody, right? Too. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. So that's that's super cool. But uh, what what else did you have? Uh, let's see. So favorite single issues. Yeah. Um, uh, action comics annual, uh, by art Adams with, uh, Batman and Superman yeah. fighting the, uh, the vampire. Mm-hmm. That's, that's one of my favorites. Uh, the art's so cool. And, uh, you know, Batman with this 
like giant chin, you know, and they're like both Batman <laughs> and Superman are like super beefy, you know. Uh-huh. And, yeah, because that, that's before Art Adams had really kind of scaled certain things back. So right. Batman looked like he was leading everything with his chin. Right, right. Yeah. And then the, the but then then the vampire isn't like your standard like Eastern European vampire. She's like she's like a hillbilly, right? Yeah. Like lives with her dead parents or something. And then like you get to see like. Like Batman goes super dark at the end, you know. Like yeah. the last scene is him like <laughs> telling the telling the local cops that he needs a few minutes alone in the morgue, and he's got like a handful of steaks and a, <laughs> and a hammer. Yeah. It's like, Dude. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I always love when when it's still within character, but it's the oh no, Batman went a little dark. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, like it doesn't work so much when Superman's like, hold on, guys, I need to. But like with, with <laughs> right. Batman, it's the. All right, so you kind of know what you're going to – it's it's going to always be the steady pace. And then it's the nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man. Um, all right, uh, so uh, I think we have time enough for one more. One more. Right, yeah. The Enigma? Yeah. By uh, by Peter Milligan and Duncan Figredo. Mm-hmm. Um, that was probably the, the first thing that I read that I, I would say it was like – close to indie i mean it was it was vertigo but it was right. still uh-huh. you know not tied to any of the superhero universes that i yeah. was reading and uh and it was it was just on a completely different level it's a really surreal cerebral book and and you get like pretty heavy into the main characters insecurities and and i want to say you know what i don't remember what year that came out but i wasn't reading anything like it and i think it was like 88 89 okay that sounds yeah. about right yeah so i was like you know 11 12 something like that yeah. and and reading something and 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 feeling like you're reading something important yeah <laughs> like i felt like i was reading something with power like like i was getting something out of reading it you know which is cool. heavy yeah, yeah yeah and that's that's a feeling that uh that i mean it's been really hard to find since i mean it's one of those new experience feelings right yeah. but that right. that book was definitely that experience for me Interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, Peter Milligan is, is uh, in my opinion, one of the most underrated writers in comics. Oh, yeah, he's great. You know? And I was so excited when I saw Duncan Fergredo coming on uh, the Hellboy, oh, Hellboy stuff, because yeah. I love Hellboy anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, and and I like, oh, loved uh, Duncan Fergredo, like, uh, just the way that he was drawing hands in the, the Clerks comics or the Jay and Silent Bob, whatever. Yeah. Like, that that was where I first saw him, and then uh, I saw that he, he had done uh, Vertigo stuff, so I collected all of that. So, like, I have this... Really, we I look almost like a stalker trying to get all this Duncan <laughs> Fergredo stuff, and then then he ends up on Hellboy, and and, and at first I'm like, well, it's no Mike Mignola, and then the, there are some things just the I like the way he draws that better than Mignola, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, which is almost sacrilege, but yeah, it's true, but it's, yeah, oh man, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, uh, so Peter Milligan, if uh, you know, if you're wanting to just kind of dip your toe in the water, like his ecstatic stuff, I think is the best representation of. His work, but the most mainstream, if you right. don't want to go so full, you yeah. know, because he can go way deep, way quick, and it gets weird. He can, yeah. So, but yeah. Yeah, so. his stuff on, uh, oh, crap. Nope, I just drew a blank. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Good talk. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, no, uh, I mean, that's that's half the show is the, hey, it's the, oh, I forgot. <laughs> but, you know, um Man, it's weird. We didn't even talk about Mr. Miracle or Planetary yet this one. But we, we did get on the uh, – uh, every show, somehow, someway, we, we ended up talking about Mr. Miracle or uh, uh, Planetary and Tom King's Batman. Ah, well, I will well, talk about Planetary at time. We did talk about Tom yeah. King's Batman. Yeah, yeah. so uh, – which I, I guess now we, we've filled those quotas with me like, oh, man, we missed that. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can't <laughs> let me do, that, can let we? Just, <laughs> let me just insert that right here for the <laughs> – yeah, well, uh, well, in the the whole thing talking about planetary. So planetary is like the second greatest thing ever written. in uh, comics. Yeah. yeah, I'll go with that. Yeah, because yeah. like yeah, Watchmen. Like, there's so many layers and all the stuff. Like, it's it is a uh, full on like textbook at, at this point. Like, right. it, it could be taught on so many levels. Oh yeah, yeah. But planetary still could be taught on, you know, but it's not written uh, like that. It, it's right. You know. It, it starts off, Warren Ellis is just having a really good time telling a real good joke of like, oh, look at me have fun with Godzilla. Look at all this. Right. Wait a minute. The Fantastic Four are bad guys. Yeah. And that and that's it. It's all still fun. Yeah. Like it's, it, you know, it's dark and it's heavy and, and it's intellectual and it's still super fun. You know, you're right. still, you know, reading through there and, you know, picking out all of the, all the sub references, you know. Yeah. It's, 
The, it, yeah. It's so good because you really need to read it a couple of times to make sure that oh, you're yeah. getting everything. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Like, I'd read it three times, and then, like, the fourth time, uh, when they're talking about, you know, uh, meeting angels and, and when they think they've discovered God, which it looks like Galactus, whatever, yeah. uh, they, they start describing what they believe the universe looks like, and you realize, oh, my God, they realize that they're in a comic book. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's yeah. the, uh, we're, we're informational based, uh, but it, it only, uh, progresses forward whenever we're being observed and we're all, <laughs> you know, single panes and, and yeah. Parallel. yeah, it's the, oh my God. Right. Yeah. It's the, this is so far beyond. Right. And you feel like the guy had to have, you know, a freaking degree in quantum theory to come up with, with, with a, a comic book analogy, you know, to be able to describe a stack of comic books. Yeah. In that twisted away, yeah. Like <laughs> it's the, oh my god! <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. It, it's it, when I read that it, it's it's how people describe reading my my Angelou stuff. It's like I closed it and looked out a window and was like, oh, I have been changed yes. by the words on the on that page. Oh my goodness! So. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's going to get any better than that. No, no, no. not at yeah. all. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much for uh, listening to yeah, thank uh, you so much. the New World Podcast. Uh, Than, thank you so much for, for being Thanks part of for this. Thanks for having me. This definitely. was a blast. Yeah, we'll yeah. definitely have you back. For sure. Uh, Brad Reed of uh, Nerdsman fame, thank you so much for uh, putting this uh, shindig on. Always, always. Stephanie, thanks. Thank you. And I'll see you all next week. See ya.